videos have really fucking showed me how much ADHD I have. I'm not gonna lie. I remember learning autumn leaves. For me, and I guess for like most of us, it's the first jazz standard we learn. Am I the only one who thinks these like beginner type of tunes are like the best? They get a bad reputation because they're like beginner tunes, but like, bro, I love Autumn Leaves. I love Blue Balsa. With my trio, I played Fly Me to the Moon and it was like the best. It was, I was like, wow, this, this melody is so fantastic. There's like a trend of people who are like, no, those tunes suck. And like, I don't know why. They're amazing. Just listen to the melody, they're great! So I remember learning these tunes and wanting to really get to that bebop chord change sound. So I've always been that kind of jazz player that wanted to like get that bebop sound. Like I wanted to feel like the chords change, like I wanted that sound, you know what I'm saying? Autumn Leaves, in a weird way, is kind of difficult because it's so diatonic. I was like, but how do I even play bop lines when it's so diatonic? It's so like, everything sounds so in. And that's so funny because if you play giant steps, which is a difficult too, but if you play just in, then it will, in a weird way, it sounds out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna show you how I play over this tune as of today. And I'm also gonna show you some hacks that I used when I played this song earlier, wanted to get that bebop sound. I'm assuming you know the the chords and the melody to this song otherwise bro go learn it come back all right sometimes you're like okay i don't know it but i just want to solo i know i was like that too but it's so important to like get the chords down get the melody down there's no stress we're here to learn we're here to become better all right so the tune starts with the two five one in b flat major so c minor seven F7, B flat major 7. There are literally millions of ways you can go about a 2 5, 1. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, this is how you do it. This is the only right way because there's no right way. Like literally there's gonna be stuff that you resonate with more and stuff that I resonate with more. Just gonna tell you stuff that I like to do and stuff that might make your solo sound more melodic. For the C minor 7, the first chord, I would solo using the C minor Dorian. So I would think C minor Dorian, doesn't mean I'm gonna run up the scale up and down, but I'm gonna think C minor Dorian with chromatic notes. So I'll probably use the major seven, which yes, it's a melodic, you can think of it as a C minor Dorian slash melodic minor scale. So I will mix in that B natural also, more as like a passing note to the C. So I will basically use a C minor Dorian slash melodic minor scale. Another thing that I really use is an E flat major seven arpeggio, which I'm gonna show you why it's so perfect to use over a two, five, one like this. So basically go up a minor third from the two chord and play a major seven an arpeggio and it's gonna be the best thing you've ever done bro this is how like a C Dorian phrase would sound and this is how the E flat major 7 arpeggio sounds and then you can like mix them up do something like this With the F7, I actually just keep, usually, I only just, I don't think, all right, now it's the F7, so it's mixed with idiot. <laughs> Play the same thing. So I keep going with the phrase, you know what I'm saying? So the, if I start with an E flat major arpeggio, I won't really think, oh, now it's the F7, because it's so related. I'll keep that idea alive and keep like seeing where that E flat major seven arpeggio takes me. And that goes for the C minor Dorian too, because it's the same thing. So a C minor Dorian and F mixolydian is gonna give you the same notes, you know what I'm saying? So just keep doing that same phrase. Don't like think, oh, now the F7 is here, so we have to change scales. Keep Keep going with that same idea that you have. One thing I'll do on a five chord, so in this case the F7, is sometimes I will aim for the third and, and then I'll do this kind of lick. And when you land on the one chord, in this case the B flat, I think it's crucial to really land on a chord to establish it like, hello, this is the third, this is the fifth, this is the ninth, you know what I'm saying? So really like try to get that habit of like, now I'm la like I'm landing and I'm not going anywhere because I just want to establish that I'm, I've landed, you know what I'm saying? So maybe you land on the third, 
Maybe a Latin of the fifth. Maybe it's a ninth kind of day. So here's an example of how the 251 might look like when using these concepts. So after that 251, so after when you land on the B flat major 7, the next chord is E flat major 7. Here I'll just literally just continue the phrase which I'm on. So I'm probably doing a phrase on the B flat major 7. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna keep doing a phrase that's might like I might sometimes I'll go to the third of the E flat, but it doesn't really matter because they're so closely related, you know what I'm saying? Expand on that phrase that you're already on. So the next three chords, A minor seven flat five, D seven flat nine, and a G minor six. This is a two five one in G minor. The chord before is E flat major seven. So I'll probably do a lick that would take me to that A minor seven flat five, which if you think about it, the E flat major seven scale and that A minor 7 flat 5 are they're the same I don't know are they the same I mean the, it's basically diatonic as I said so you can basically keep that B flat major E flat major phrase that you've already done and you can keep it over the A minor 7 flat 5 but what I would do to not make it sound so diatonic is just land on the third of A try to like do a phrase that land on the third of A like this <laughs> And then you could do a phrase that land on the third of D, like this. For landing on the G minor, I almost always try to land on the fifth. It's just, I think that sounds the best over minor chords. So that's how this would sound. So now you basically have the whole tune. I would literally argue that the E flat major arpeggio is like the most important thing in this tune. I'll just show you an example of how the E flat major seven arpeggio can be used over most chords and make nice Bach lines. That's it for this lesson. I hope you got some inspiration. I hope you got some ideas over how to play over this tune. And if you like this kind of like how to solo over this tune, then comment below and like, like this video, I guess that will make me realize that it's a good video and that I should keep doing these kind of <laughs> kinds of videos. Just keep playing. Welcome to the unfiltered guitar community. Com Welcome to the unfiltered guitar community. Let's make guitar fun. Let's improve through brotherhood and self-improvement. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.